Okay, uh, welcome at uh, Elector Labs. Today I would like to talk a little bit about uh, Platino. Uh, Platino is our um, AVR compatible uh, PCB. It's also Arduino compatible. And Platino, the project, is a PCB and it's not a circuit actually. And it was published in uh, October 2011. Here's the article. But a lot of people, uh, we have learned since then, that a lot of people find it difficult to understand uh, how they have to uh, configure Platino. So in this video I would, I would like to explain a little bit more about uh, how to build your Platino. For instance, we published this Platino-based soldering station recently. And to build it you have to solder your Platino first. But that's a bit of a chicken and an egg problem. So how to do this? So first you have to get yourself a real soldering iron and then you can build this one. Okay, um, Platino, here is the naked PCB, the unpopulated PCB, uh, is a universal PCB for AVR microcontrollers, ATX Mega microcontrollers in 40 pin dip, this 40 pin dip uh, houses and 28 pin dip houses. Um, then it is compatible with two types of, even three types of LCDs, four, by, four lines of 20 or 16 characters and also two lines of 16 uh, characters. On Platino you can also mount push buttons, here, here and on the, no not on the bottom on this one. There is space for a buzzer, there is space for a RGB LED. There is space for a rotary encoder. Uh, the power supply, uh, here, well, a voltage regulator also goes on the board. And you can uh, add connectors on the board to make it uh, to add Arduino shields. As I said, the board was also intended to be Arduino compatible. You don't have to use it as an Arduino, you can also use it with the Buscom, for instance. Uh, we have people using it with Buscom or with Atmel Studio or anything, but it is possible to make an Arduino out of it. Important to know about the Platino board is that you have to configure it before you start soldering components. So on the soldering side, if you look closely, you will see 10 or so solder jumpers. These are jumpers that you have to uh, short with a bit of solder. There are two here in the center that decide or configure the board to use with a crystal oscillator. If you don't need a crystal oscillator, you have to configure it otherwise. If you want to use a 20-pin, 28-pin DIP package with ISP programming, then you have to configure the ISP connector because it's not completely compatible with the 40-pin uh, AVRs. So the ISP connector has its own configuration jumpers to make it compatible with both types of uh, processor cases. Other Solar jumpers decide if you use a, dip, uh, a push button or an LED or if it is the pin is a normal GPIO or anything. So for this you have to consult the table where you tick the options you want and from that when you tick the list you know which jumper you have to, uh, which solder jumper you have to place. So this is very important. You have to start with that and especially with the, if you select a 28 pin uh, processor like the um, 80x, uh, 80 mega 328 that's used on the uh, Arduino because there is a solder jumper under the 28 pin controller. Here we have a board configured for a 40 pin uh, AVR with a power supply, with a buzzer, with an LCD connector. That of course goes on the, on the uh, solder side because it's meant to be used like this. Push buttons also go on this side. This is the human interface side. Rotary encoders go on this side, on the solder side, and the display. This one, for instance, the 40 pin display. Fits nicely here, as you can see. About uh, some more about component, component placement. The voltage regulator, for instance, you have to look carefully to the component print. You can see that it is mounted with the heatsink to the edge of the board and then you can fold it forward so that the edge, the, the heatsink is up, this way. 
Do not mount it the other way around because it will not work. Uh, then you have two capacitors here, this one, these two. They are a bit higher than the connectors, the shield extension connectors. So if they are in the way, they are positioned in such a way that you can fold them, you can lay them down actually. Now here they are soldered too closely to the PCB, but if you solder them a little bit higher, then you can uh, put them down and uh, then they will be beneath uh, the extension connectors. Assembling uh, Platino requires a little bit more effort than assembling a normal PCB because there are so many options. But I'm sure you can do it. So once you know that some parts go on the solder side, it's easy enough to uh, build your board. The important component to know, this one, an important part, the crystal, if you need it, it goes on the solder side. And you can see that it goes there because there is space left free around the mounting holes. And since these are always metal can uh, parts, they will not short anything. You can mount it on the other side, but there are traces under the, so it's a little bit more risky. Okay, so that's the basic thing about the Platino. Now, uh, a special feature of Platino is that you are free to place the push buttons. So push buttons, this is why it has this, these bits on the, uh, the outside. You can put a push button here, but it can also be placed here, or here, or here, or here, or there. And the same is true for a rotary encoder. So there are several positions for the rotary encoder and for the push buttons, allowing you to create the user interface that you want with the push buttons in the place where you want. And if this doesn't suit you, it is even possible to break it off. You can break this part off and then you have a small board with uh, push buttons or a rotary encoder that you can mount somewhere else. So it gives you a lot of freedom in how to configure your um, final application. Uh, you have your choice of LCDs, you have a choice of push buttons and a choice of uh, rotary encoders, an LED and a buzzer even, so you have lots of uh, interface options. The size of Platino was designed to make it fit nicely into this uh, enclosure, a plastic Bopla enclosure, it's a standard enclosure, it will, according to Bopla, always be available. As you can see, there's positions here, so you have enough room to put the LCD in front and the rotary encoders in front so that it can stick through the front panel that goes here. Okay, then on the what will in the end be the back side of the project, so the component side of the Platino port, you can also add extension connectors here. And on these extension connectors, you can stick uh, an Arduino compatible shield, or if you use this connector, which is not available on Arduino, then you have access to the, all the ports of the 40 pin uh, AVR, giving you more options, of course, uh, but it's not compatible with Arduino shields. So extension shields, extension boards, they are called shields since uh, Arduino, go on this side of the PCB. Um, so, once you have built your Platino and you want to program the processor, the controller, you can use the ISP connector, which, as I told you before, you have configured correctly for the package type of your processor, eh, 40 pin or 28 pin. Or, if you program it with a bootloader, Arduino bootloader, you can use it with the uh, Arduino IDE and an FTDI compatible serial to USB cable. This connector, uh, this, the Platino has a special connector on board that's compatible with this FTDI compatible cable. You just put it on, uh, plug this into your PC, start up the Arduino, and you can program the board as an Arduino. To make it even more Arduino compatible, or more like an Arduino, uh, we also wrote a software library for Arduino, which includes functions that allow you to use easily the push buttons, the rotary encoders, the LCD, etc. And also to tell the software how you configure the board. So there's a function to set the jumpers in the software and then the software knows, the library knows 
how you configure the board and so the pins will be set correctly right away. So it makes it easy, very easy for you. And it, the software also nicely integrates with the Arduino IDE, meaning that you copy the software into the Arduino setup and then if you look under tools in the Arduino IDE under tools uh, board, then you would sh uh, should see all the Platinos that you can use and you will see a whole list of uh, Platinos with the processor listed next to it so you know which Platino you have to use because for every this is a bit of a problem of the AVR for every different AVR you have a different bootloader so you cannot use an uh, 80 mega 168 with the bootloader of an 80 mega 12 uh, 84 for instance so when you integrate the software in Arduino then you have to pick the processor that goes with the Platino that the one, with the one that you put on Platino. Okay, now that you know how to configure Platino, you can build your own soldering station and configure your next Platino board for our next project. Have fun!